This week on The Stogie Geek Show, we interview Clint Aaron from 262 Cigars. Then after that, we're going to interview Mel Shaw from M. Bombay Cigars. Then after that, we're going to talk about sto- uh, Stogies even. Rogies? For this Rogies? Rogies. We're going to talk about Rogies for this week. And we've got some epic smokes we're going to talk about. Stogie Sand is going to be here in studio it is not a show that you want to miss. Watch it live. Watch it on the video. Listen to the audio. This is going to be one that you are going to want to listen to for sure. So stay tuned for more Stogie Geeks. If you created the Aging Room Small Batch Cigar Line, the highest rated boutique cigar brand of our times, what would you do next? Well, if you're Raphael Nodell from Boutique Blend Cigars, you would combine your three most important passions of your life. Cuba, music, and cigars, and create a new classic, La Boheme Cigars. La Boheme is Raphael's take on the golden age of Cuban cigars. La Boheme is a sophisticated blend of extra aged and hard to find tobaccos from the Dominican Republic. A medium bodied cigar, rich in flavors reminiscent of the island he left 35 years ago in a small boat with his family. Why wait for the embargo to be lifted? Smoke La Boheme today. Blending is in our DNA. Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, providing smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the same quality, construction, and detail which he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the Ultra Premium Roberto P. Duran Premium Cigar Series, Azan Cigars, Naya, and Baracoa. Duran Cigars uses a seed to humidor approach as all tobacco is grown on their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure the progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Paying homage to the mecca of tobacco, Pinor del Rio, Cuba, Abe Flores opened his PDR Cigar Factory in the Dominican Republic over 10 years ago. Abe is one of the hottest boutique cigar makers in the industry today, earning the number 10 spot on Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of 2014 with the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada. Abe and his team use Cuban blending traditions in a modern boutique Dominican factory. Smoke PDR cigars and cut, light, and taste what they love to do. Welcome, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I'm, of course, your host, Paul Asadorian, joined here in studio by none other than Stogie Santa. Good evening, everybody. Dude, I'm so glad you uh, could join us here tonight. I'm uh, glad to be back. It's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh... I, I didn't know you were a fan of martinis. Oh, oh. Which is, <laughs> it's, got, it's very dangerous for you and I to be drinking martinis here in the studio. We'll just leave it at that. Just a little bit. Just a little. Oh. Um, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little more. It, Will is here with us from North Carolina. Mm-hmm. Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Uh, greetings, everybody. Uh, fantastic to have you. Now, la- the last time we recorded a show, Will, wasn't last week because it was Thanksgiving, but the week prior, you weren't able to be on, correct? Um, no, I was on. It was two weeks before. It was the a week weeks before, before that when we did Dave Burke. Okay. Yeah, okay. that was wedding weekend. That was the wedding weekend. The wedding weekend. Okay, excellent, excellent. So it's nice to have you back, dude. Uh, it's nice to have the three of us back mm-hmm. on the show. We've got a lot yep. of sticks to talk about because we've had a week break. We smoked a lot of cigars. We've got two interviews for you on the show. I, I do want to say uh, uh, we don't do a lot of a pairing. Every once in a while, we do pairings on the show. Mm. Martini is an. It- I was kind of surprised that you were into martinis, oh, yeah. Stogie Santa. Um, I've been getting into them lately. We have a new executive producer, uh, Keith. Wave to Keith, everyone. Uh, he's awesome. He's actually my neighbor, <laughs> and he's been doing a fantastic. He hit the ground running here uh, at Security Weekly, and of course on the Stogie Geeks. Uh, and he's a huge martini fan, mm-hmm. and I've been dabbling in the martinis. And I have to say, as it relates to cigars, Will, I don't know if you've experienced this, if you've had a, a martini. Um, it doesn't impede 
like it some doesn't spirits, enhance, yeah, it doesn't some, do anything. It, it doesn't enhance and it doesn't impede, right? No. Like some spirits, like we were drinking that Sam Adams Utopias. We had a small bit of it. It impedes on your mm. enjoyment of the cigar. We've talked about beer and how it can not complement. The martini is kind of interesting because it doesn't complement, but it doesn't impede on your enjoyment no. of the cigar. I find it adds, especially with the dirty martinis we're drinking now, it adds some saltiness, and that's kind of it. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. Like when you, yeah. you do the Jose Blanco thing, and he talks yeah. about all the different flavors, like saltiness being one of them. Like it adds a little bit of saltiness, and, and that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. So. I would agree. Yeah, I mean, it's not like having like Frangelico or something like that, which is just going to overpower uh, whatever yeah. you get in the tobacco. Um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of interesting. Uh, Will we've already lit up uh, the M Bombay cigars, and okay. we'll, we'll talk to Mel Shot afterwards. But um, I want to turn it over to you to introduce uh, Clint Aaron from Two Six Two Cigars. Yeah. So. Um, Clint's been on once before. Um, we're glad to have him back, uh, Mr. Clint Aaron um, of Two Six Two Cigars. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show. Thanks for having me, guys. So this is episode one sixty six. So you are actually on episode one hundred with us. Um, so it's been a little while. So we're kind of glad to have you back in the saddle here. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll get into it. Um, I guess I'll get right off the bat here. Um, big, big things happening at Two Six Two right now. We've been covering a lot of it on Cigar Coop. Um, it is your five year anniversary. Yeah, yeah. So we're um, five five years has kind of come and gone, and uh, it, it just it, it flew by. Um, we actually landed our first store in j- late January 2010, and so um, my goal and, and pardon my voice, it's a little a uh, little froggy tonight, but um, no. It, it, the five year cigar. It, uh, as long as I came out with it before December thirty first, two thousand fifteen, I, I said that that counted because it's still within the same year. So uh, we're we're right under that uh, under the wire. But you know, better uh, better late than never, as they say. Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget because uh, my local cigar shop had a S- Super Bowl party uh, in two thousand ten, and there was a cigar that showed up. Um, it was a Brazilian Matafina uh, wrapper cigar. With a white band on the footer, and that was actually the paradigm yep. that we were smoking that night. So I rem- I remember that mm. very vividly being 2010 because that was before my first IPCBR. Yeah. Yep. You know, so, the, the the paradigm was the very first blend that we did, and I blended that based off what I wanted to smoke every day. I said if I get into this and nobody likes the cigar, at least I have a warehouse full of cigars that I know I like that I can smoke for a really long time. So, <laughs> so we used a Brazilian Matafina Maduro wrapper on that, uh, medium strength, medium body, notes of dark chocolate, coffee, some spicy leathery undertones. So the story of 262, I want to kind of get into that a little because I think there's a really, really good story. Um, the name even kind of plays into it. Um, the whole. Um, why don't you give us? You could probably tell that story better than I can. Yeah. Why don't you give us? Yeah, no. Um, yeah, two six two is my uh, my golf score. Um, so. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, though. If I could, if I could string together um, a grand total of two six two over four days at, in Augusta, I'd probably be wearing a green jacket. But um, no, it stands for February, which is the second month of nineteen sixty two, and that's when JFK signed the Cuban trade embargo. It's not the fact that he did it, but it's how he did it. He had his press secretary go round up all the Cuban H. Chapman Petit Coronas he could find, brings them back. JFK puts pen to paper, and so he, you know, setting the embargo in place. So he made sure he got all of his cigars before anybody else could get theirs. And fast forward 50 plus years, we are still still dealing um, with the government trying to tell us where we can and can't smoke, trying to tax us out of existence. Now we've got the FDA trying to just kibosh smoking altogether. And we are adults. We can make an informed, educated decision on whether or not we want to smoke cigars, which is a perfectly legal product. And we don't need the government trying to tell us what we can and can't do. And meanwhile, all these politicians are up in Capitol Hill, you know, smoking Cuban cigars. And so what's good for the goose isn't good for the gander. And that's that's. But now, Clint, Clint, when you talk about smoking Cuban cigars, though, uh, What's come out of Nicaragua and Dominican and all of the other tobaccos that come from countries such as Peru, Mexico, Brazil, uh, even Cameroon, Africa, the tobacco that we have available to us and the awesome things that the blenders do today, mm. I think certainly rivals what is going on in Cuba today. Oh, I, absolutely, yeah. And, and you know, by that comment, what I, what I meant was the fact that 
you know, the Cuban cigars, they are up until recently, it's, it's contraband, right? And so, mm-hmm. um, not necessarily talking about quality or flavor or anything. It's just the fact that the average Joe can't go to the local B and M and pick up a Cuban cigar, but the politicians still have access to all this stuff. So, um, mm-hmm. no, you, you hit the nail right on the head with, um, the tobaccos and, and that we have access to and the blending and some of these, um, I don't want to say never, never before seen techniques, but just some kind of interesting things um, that have taken place really within the last five years. It's uh, it's a great time to be not only in the industry and creating, but to just be a consumer because there's so many neat things out there right now. Well, it also seems to me that uh, to be a, a blender today is really such an experience because it seems like uh, everyone who's blending cigars has access to a lot of different types of tobacco Mm -hmm. from a lot of different countries from a lot of different farms and we talk about you know dominican tobacco but there's all kinds of different types of dominican tobacco in fact there's the same plant that can be grown on the same uh or from the same strain that's grown on different farms that can have different characteristics and i think everything that the blenders have access to today is really one of the variables that is contributing to a lot of the great cigars that we're smoking today. Yeah, that's right. Um, so did you, you came out with a new cigar for this year, Clint? Is that what you were saying earlier? Yeah, so Suit and Tie is uh, it, it, it's our you know five years of being uh, on the shelves, and so we decided we wanted to do an anniversary cigar, and so uh, that actually is um, shipping Monday. Uh, Suit and Tie is what it's called. Limited production, two sizes, my two favorite sizes, Box Press, Toro, and Lancero, and 25 retailers. And the Lancero is not Box Press, correct? Correct. That would be interesting <laughs> to have a Lancero Box <laughs> oh. Press, dude. I would, I would, be, I, I would I, be really I, shocked if, somebody, if you said it was a Lancero Box <laughs> Press. But. I think Steve Sidron did one, um, a Box Press Lancero with the Gonzo or Santeria a few years back, I believe. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. But. Interesting. And, 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 Enrique's doing it with 1502. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes, you're right, Will. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so we've got 25 retailers that uh, that are on board with us that are carrying the product. And um, Coop, you uh, you released that uh, that list a couple days ago, so thank you for that. And you know, feel free to log on to uh, to Coop's website, uh, cigar-coop.com. Check out that list. You can find it all over Facebook, Twitter. Hopefully, find a B&M near you uh, that that. Uh, you know, has joined us in this journey that's carrying it. And if not, I'm so sure. So, Clint, some... is this a new blend? Like, what's the blend differences between regular 262 and this limited release? Yeah, it's it's a, a new blend. Uh, we're, we're not disclosing the blend information, mm-hmm. uh, just the wrapper. It's uh, Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Okay. I, so, go ahead, Will. Uh, so, you have work with Sumatra. This is the first Sumatra you've released, correct? Uh, yeah, well, Manifesto had an Indonesian Sumatra on it, but uh, as far as core, as far as you know, our core line, we don't we don't have a Sumatra in our core line. Yep, I find Sumatra to really embody the spice component. And of, there's a certain sweetness to it too. Yeah, but I also find it kind of balances out with mm. a lot of the spiciness too. So, how would you characterize the uh, the wrapper? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a very uh, easy smoking, smooth smoking cigar. Uh, spice, sweet and spice, you know, kind mm. of just very, very pleasant, very rich in mm-hmm. flavor, but it's not going to come in and knock you in the face strength wise. So it's, a, it's a, just a great everyday smoke again for an everyday smoker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I find with the, with the Ecuadorian Sumatra, you, you mentioned the word rich because with an Indonesian one, it tends to be a little like, much more tamer is what I find yeah. where, mm-hmm. where with that, you're going to get more of that, that boldness, I think with the Ecuadorian Sumatra. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Good point. So, Clint, i got to ask this question here. Um, you have some great names for your cigars. Um, so you have, I'm going to just, Allegiance, Revere. You mentioned Manifesto, Ideology, and Paradigm. This one's suit and tie. Completely different. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant to ask you about that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, uh, I won, <laughs> essentially. So basically, if it were up to me, and, and some of you guys know my background, it's uh, a finance background, come from the accounting world, and for me, it would just be like Cigar 1, 2, 3, 4, or ABC, or whatever, and uh, Mike Justice, who does all the graphic design, all the artwork for us, he's kind of the uh, the brainchild behind the um, artistic side of 262, and so he, he's you know been the one to really come up with those names, and um, 
I just wanted to do something fun, something that uh, kind of stuck uh, in minds that people would just remember. You know, we have several folks that um, get tripped up on some of the names, just, um, you know, Paradigm, Paradigm, Per Diem, uh, <laughs> you know, the Revere. I've heard it called the Reverie, the Reserve, uh, the Reverse. So I figured with suit and tie, it's something that is catchy that people will, will remember. There's a lot of people that call Target Target as well. Right. So you know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, can, I can see your struggle <laughs> there. Clint. There's a fashion blogger I know who actually does that. I just learned that recently. Mm -hmm. There's a fashion blogger I kind of interact with, so to speak. Uh, well, wow, Mr. Coop <laughs> doing the fashion. Coop. Coop. Oh, right. Oh, we exchange, um, you know, we exchange ideas. Yeah, if you come <laughs> yeah, back not... with a full head of hair next oh. week, I'll say, what the <laughs> hell is going on? <laughs> Obviously, you don't exchange clothing, Will, but no, we'll, we're working not, on that. Uh, Oh, no, no, definitely not. Definitely My not. hat, I'm trying to be very fashionable, but... Not working. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say probably failing at that, but we'll, no. you know, he, he got so, there first. So, Clint, are you actually, you know, I know the cigar is debuting in uh, City, City Place Cigar in Lynchburg, right? Are you going to show up in suit and tie? Yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm dusting off the monkey suit and, and going to pull out the tux, and, uh, and we're going to, you know, kick it off right. Right. No, the Sumatra, was it anything behind that, something that you just wanted to do something different or compare the other blends? Yeah, um, I just, I, I haven't really worked with it and I wanted to. And, you know, when I was blending Allegiance, I, I kind of had um, a couple a couple ideas in mind. And one of them was Brazilian Matafina Natural, which actually is what, what the Allegiance is. And then also some Sumatra and there were a couple others. And so, you know, when you're down there, you just kind of you make make notes and you say, well, I use this for this cigar, but I think I can probably use it for another cigar and then maybe change some of the binder filler, mess around with there and, you know, et cetera. And that's kind of what we did was I I, and I love this blend, but it just wasn't what I was looking for for Allegiance. Mm -hmm. And so so I just kind of shelved it and, and decided that, you know, why not make a make an LE out of it instead of doing a full production line with it. Excellent. And Clint, how limited will this uh, production run be? Uh, Five thousand cigars. Mm. Gotcha. That is a limited run. Absolutely. And it's one and done, like Manif Manifesto was your other limited that you released in 2012. Correct. Yep, one and done. That is a true limited cigar. That's for sure. <laughs> no, well, definitely. Def yeah, and that's the way I think. I, I like that. Uh, I yeah, like I think that. we I, agree I really that that's like the way that. you should do it, right? Exactly. Like, it, limited it's is true. Limited, limited for, you know, like for, for five years. Okay, got it. Well, it's not limited anymore. You know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I, you got to put a number on the mm -hmm. number of cigars they're going to have. Exactly. That particular Whatever blend. number it is, make it that. Don't, you know. Mm hmm. Good. And Ooh. how the box count uh, on that? Yeah, they're, they're 10 count boxes. That's great. That's good. It's good. Yep. Right, mm -hmm. right time for Christmas. So, there you go. Exactly. Exact. Stuff, what have you, <laughs> <laughs> etc. Yeah. So I guess I'll put two and two together. I know you're working with Allegiance with Tabacalera Carreras, right? So this came from Tabacalera Carreras right now. I know you work with a few factories. Yeah, we're we're not not uh, disclosing the um, the factory or the or the blend, but um, I mean, you said you can kind of put two and two together, so. Okay, I agree. You, you, you can kind of you can sniff around and you can probably look at my uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter feed um, back when I was uh, in Nicaragua in um, October, and, and you might be able to tell, you know, where I was based on that. <laughs> right, right, right. What um in terms of so you know you've kind of now it's been out there with the retailers. How has uh I mean has, have you pretty much sold out yet? Are you uh you got the full allocation yeah. distributed? Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we're sold out, so which is uh, very very exciting, very humbling as well. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you've built some in, in, around the country. You've built some very strong, like I'd say, I say Texas, you're strong in. I think the Indiana, Kentucky area. You know, we've talked about you're strong there, and I think Arizona. Those are some areas that you've been just particularly very strong there right now. Any other pockets you've kind of hit right now? Um. No, I mean, like you said, Tex, I've, I've been focusing on Texas this year. Uh, we've got a full-time sales rep down in the southeast. Um, so, you know, southeast is starting to pick up. Tennessee and Kentucky have always loved 262, um, which is just great, you know, and, again, very humbling. But uh, they've, they've stood by us from, from day one. 
And you'll see in the list of retailers that um, there are some pockets where it, it seems like, um, you know, there's three or four in this city and three and four in this city, but those are the guys that have been with us, you know, from day one in the trenches, and they're the ones that, um, yeah, I guess, put it, you know, I, I guess get rewarded, so to speak. You know, I, I don't want to say that that way, but I think you know what I mean by yeah. that is you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. We're Loyalty in goes a long, long way. Right. Yeah, so, long, so long. Clint, <laughs> the uh, question from the chat uh, from Kruk, who's, uh, who's here for our four-year mm -hmm. anniversary, awesome guy. Uh, he's asking about the Lancero size and what your thoughts are on, I, I think, to kind of twist his question, like what's the business decision behind a Lancero, right? Like a lot of the market is not demanding the Lancero size, but a lot of us story geeks, we get the right Lancero in our hands and we really, really like it. But I think a lot of that is because we've been educated on how to smoke it mm -hmm. too, because I think you have to approach a Lancero slightly differently a lot of other size cigars. So what were some of the decisions into a Lancero and what were some of your reservations about doing a Lancero? Yeah, I mean, business-wise, it's probably the, it's not a smart decision um, just because <laughs> it's, <laughs> but I don't care, right? I mean, I, I make, I make, um, <laughs> I make it very well known that my, my mission in life in this industry is to turn every shop in America into a Lancero shop. Mm -hmm. So um, I came out with a Lancero before I came out with a 660. I have one 660 and I have three Lanceros. So if that tells you anything, it's I just I don't care. I, it's a great smoke and I love the educating the folks, right, and letting them taste a difference. And, and um, I mentioned we have a, a rep in the southeast, Kyle, the intern, and um, what he does is he does um, smoking events. So he'll come in with the paradigm and he'll say, okay, we're going to smoke the 660 and then we're going to smoke the Lancero side by side and then we're going to compare. And when you break it down, like you said, you kind of have to approach it differently. And when you break it down and you approach it differently, you can take a step back and you can, you can, you know, really appreciate, uh, that, that size. So, so hold on. He does an event and he gives everyone a six by 60 and then a Lancero and they smoke it at the same time. Some shops smoke them at the same time. Some guys do them back to back. Mm -hmm. uh, he has found that doing it at the same time works better because you can you can really start to to notice the difference when you're burning the same that, blend. That's, that's, that's that. really cool. So, yeah. Well, when yeah, you yeah, do yeah. it like that, you 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 can decipher. Yes. Quicker. You know Take a I mean? puff from the six sixty. Yep. We gotta try that, Paul. Actually, yeah. we no, that's a really good any, exercise. Any kind of I like that. You do yeah. things like that. You know what I mean? That's a really good exercise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's when you. you know, Does he find that a lot of people convert from 660 to Lancero, or is it more a slow progression? It, it's you know it just kind of depends. Some of the guys they're like, man, I, I didn't even really, you know, the Lancero scared me. I didn't know what to think, and then they end up smoking it, putting in the rotation. Mm -hmm. Other guys they're maybe a little bit slower uh, to to Cheaper. step the dark to come <laughs> to the dark side, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then. It just just kind of depends on the on the shop and depends on the customer. Dark side, nice. Two weeks to the new Star Wars movie. Well Thank played. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> Will, more what, questions for Clint? Yeah, actually, I'll ask one more from the chat room, and then I got another one. So, uh, uh, Up and Smoke asks about the name Suit and Tie. Does it have? To, and I think I know the answer to this one. Does it have anything to do with the Justin Timberlake uh, song? Yeah. So or I was uh, I was on a. Uh, sales trip and the radio listen to the radio and suit and tie came on and um, I was like you know I think that just would probably be a pretty cool name for a cigar you got the suit being the Toro and you got the tie being the Lancero and suit and tie and so you know just kind of kind of fit so yeah it was it was totally Justin Timberlake are you I a Justin Timberlake fan well I was channeling my inner Wes Thornton so if you guys know Wes he's a big uh, big Timberlake yeah. fan so so you're so you so you're you're not Claiming to be a Justin Timberlake fan. Uh, I mean, he's he's talented. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, Sorry, it's not that I dislike him, <laughs> um, but no, I, mean, it's, I I don't have his poster on the wall okay. in the office. Okay. If that's what you mean, <laughs> you got to work on that, Clint. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and and actually, that's a real. You know, I didn't realize when you said the name, it tied to the two Vitolas, which was the the Toro and the Lancero. Now we we've talked a lot about the Lancero, but the box press Toro is a staple of your line as well, and you—that's been the one side you've always box pressed. What's what's kind of the rationale behind that one? Again, it was just something kind of quirky to do. Box press Toro six by fifty-four. Uh, when I was smoking, was my favorite size, 
I remember smoking, you know, the Tarano Exodus box press, and I just I fell in love with that back, you know, when I first started smoking, and so I've always kind of gravitated toward a box press. And when when I launched two six two, that was in the paradigm. I did a box press tour, I did a short robusto, and I did a torpedo. And then I said, well, you know what? Every single cigar I do, we're going to do a box press tour. And you remember the manifesto and allegiance and everything else. And so, <coughs> excuse me. And so it, it just it fit to to go ahead and do again a box press toro. And what I, what I, my, Clint, what I like about the box press toro is I find that the the airflow and combustion really works in yeah. that in that size. I don't think box yeah. pressing something. But in don't that, you find box press on and well whatever size you want to use. It's there's no there's no uh, gray area either they like it or they don't. Yeah, you know what I mean? no, it's, it's very it's, polarizing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I tend to like. I, I, I personally like it. Like it. It, it um, changes. It changes up the flavor. It does. Big time. Yeah. No yeah, doubt. I mean, it's it's also because it's, I mean a little less tobacco in there because of the box pressing. Right. Mm -hmm. And I found in some some cases it works, and I found in other cases it hasn't. Now with your cigars, Clint, it's worked. I mean, I love that. I love the box press store in the in the. Um, in the lines you've done, so it, it just seemed to click. So is that something when you're blending or coming out with a line, are you looking saying, oh, I know I want to have that box press tour, I, I know I want to have that Lancero, so that's, is that kind of how you're going to start things off and then see what other sizes you may add? Yeah, yeah, exactly, Coop. That's interesting, yeah. Because we hear, we hear some folks start with the, you know, they focus around the Robusto or the Corona, but that's kind of interesting to hear because that's something that's just been a staple of what you had. Right, that's right. Yeah, we've got another question here. It's really good. How did you get from accounting into cigars, actually, from Crook? Yeah, I, I just uh, I hated hated being an accountant. So um, I wanted to do something that I loved. And I had my first cigar when I was 19, and my buddy and I solved the world's problems. And uh, kind of Cliff's Notes version is uh, graduated college, kind of went down the corporate route, didn't like it, wanted to do something I loved, and uh, it, it just it was a fit. You know, you start looking around and you say, well. Uh, this guy, he was a lawyer. This guy sold hurricane nuts and bolts. This guy was in corporate banking, blah, blah, blah. And, and if they can do it, why can't I? So that's that's kind of the uh, the abbreviated version of, of why I'm no longer an accountant. So. <laughs> <laughs> and you have someone else do your accounting for or you, uh, for 262, or do you, are you hands-on with that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm still pretty hands-on. I do all my, um, you know, day-to-day -day stuff and all that nonsense but uh, at the end of the year you know I just I send send the file to the accountant and, and say uh, you know get me back as much money as you can just make sure, <laughs> make sure you don't owe. <laughs> smart man smart yeah, man Clint. Ex exactly, exactly. It, I like it, I like the strategy that's yeah. great uh, well we look forward to the suit and tie I can't wait to try it uh, that's awesome and uh, we thank you for coming back on the Stewie geeks and uh, thanks for everything have a good night Clint Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Clint, it's always a pleasure. Uh, best of luck on the launch. Thanks, Coop. Take care, okay. guys. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. With that, we're going to take a short break. We're going to get our next guest on the show, Mr. Mel Shaw from M Bombay Cigars. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Where's the music? There is a, a lot of buttons to push, Will, so... Okay. So sometimes the music will be there <laughs> and sometimes not. <laughs> Thanks again, Clint, man. Appreciate it. I think he's gone. Okay. All no right. One. I just got to, I got to run in for a minute while you guys get it. Okay. Okay. Go pee. It's okay. <laughs> what I want to ask him too, I forgot at the end of course, is the difference in, in the taste and, and blending and the ratio between a box press Toro and a Lancero. Mm. Totally different. Two different animals. <coughs> See what happens when you drink water? No, I'm all set. Thanks. Sorry about that, guys. I had a. I had a major uh, ash on my shirt. Hey, that's, yeah. that's character. <laughs> Fuck you too, Billy. <laughs> Watch well, Scent of a Woman today for like the 50th time. Oh. My, one of my, I lo that's, oh. love it. Oh, I tell you what. 
I went to see I went to see Creed. Yeah, and oh my goodness, one I of the. See. It, let me tell you about this. I'm a I'm a huge Rocky fan, but what I'm telling people is you got to see this if you like the original Rocky. What this movie does compared to what the Rocky movies Thank have you. not done in the past, it has character development. 